This is Dr. Caroline Peterson from Natural Women's Health Institute in Sarasota, Florida. Today I'm talking to you about natural treatment for hemorrhoids. A hemorrhoid is a varicose vein in the anus or the rectum. And there's two different kinds. One is internal and the other is external. And these have kind of fancy definition about where they start from, the dentate or the pectinate line. Um, but really, um, they an internal can move down so that it can seem like you have an internal one, uh, an external hemorrhoid, even if it's an internal. One of the differences besides where they originate from is that the internal hemorrhoids are covered by mucosa, which generally um, doesn't is have the same kind of pain sensation um, what, as the external ones that are covered by skin. So here we go. Here's the pectinate line right there, the de dentate line. And so basically it's saying that the bottom third of the rectum, including the anus, is um, an external hemorrhoid. And then anything above that would be an internal hemorrhoid. But because the veins kind of bulge, they can like push down. So you can have an internal hemorrhoid that kind of pushes down into that, ex you know, that external hemorrhoid area. They, because they have different kind of covering, they can have a different kind of sensation about them. So the internal ones um, are the ones that are more commonly associated with the bleeding that when you poop, um, then you get that bright red blood on the toilet paper or dripping into the toilet bowl, or you'll see it on the, the bowel movement or the stool, the fecal matter, the poop itself. Um, you can, those, like I was saying before, those veins can kind of prolapse or fall down. Um, and so they'll, there can be this feeling of like heaviness in the rectum and, and like, I can't get my poop out. Like it feels like something, it, it's stuck in there, like something's in the way and that can be the vein. If, if these come down low enough, then you'll get, you can get some itching. And then of course the body produces mucus when there's any kind of irritant, um, like a varicose vein can, can be an irritant and the body will produce mucus to help make things more slippery. The external hemorrhoid is the one that starts in the bottom third of the rectum and the anus. And that one will be like a lump outside of the anus. And these are the ones that are more likely to clot. Um, so it, when they clot, they'll become very, very painful. And these, a lot of times you'll have the swelling and the pressure with these. And it can even feel like you're sitting on something. And in the olden days, they used to call these piles because it was like there was a pile of worms that were coming out of you. That's the external hemorrhoid. And these two can have the itching. And it can be hard because it can be hard to clean them because the fecal matter can get caught up in them and gets messy and, oh boy, can be a real problem. So there's hemorrhoids are graded where by basically by prolapse. So that if there's no prolapse, your hemorrhoid is a gray one. If there's prolapse that goes in on its own, let's say it comes out just when you're straining, goes in on its own, that's a grade two. If there's a prolapse that you can push it back in, that's a grade three. Or a grade four is a prolapse where you can't push it back in, it's too big. So again, here's the, here, here we have the, um, the hemorrhoid. So we have the internal hemorrhoid that's above that dentate or pectinate line. That's the, that starts up here in the upper two thirds of the rectum. And then there's the external one. So the risk factors for, for hem, hem, external hemorrhoids are family history, diarrhea or constipation, and then things that make it hard to poop, like injury to a spinal cord that would increase the, the pressure. It would make it, you'd be more likely to be constipated. Inflammatory bowel disease, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, 
And then if you've had anal sex that has caused an injury to the, um, the anus or the rectum, that can be a reason. Even rectal surgery itself is a reason for having, for having these external hemorrhoids. And people who are in higher socioeconomic status may be at more risk of these external hemorrhoids. The internal hemorrhoids are, are related to anything that increases intra-abdominal pressure. So like COPD would make it hard for you to get your breath um, and more likely to be bearing down. Any kind of chronic strain, for instance, an enlarged prostate, or even if you have like a narrowing of the urethra, so you have to strain in order to pee, um, that can cause, uh, be a risk factor for hemorrhoids. And any kind of space occupying lesion, um, so especially in the pelvis um, or in the lower abdomen, uh, so it could be like a, some kind of a tumor, like ovarian or rectosigmoid tumors. And pregnancy is another kind of space occupying lesion that causes more weight um, pushing down into the pelvis, onto the rectum. And of course, everybody knows about um, the importance of eating fiber. So we can get those big bulky stools that just slide out um, and we don't have to strain a bit. So when we look at actually like the venous drainage, so hemorrhoid is a, is a, is a vein, right? It's a vein that's dilated, enlarged, painful, problematic. And so, and so this is like the hemorrhoidal plexus there and whoopsie. And so the lower, the lower third of the rectum and anus is drained by the inferior rectal vein that feeds into the in uh, internal pudendal vein. And that one goes into the um, internal iliac vein. And then of course, into the common iliac vein in the vena cava. The middle third of the rectum is drained by the middle rectal vein that goes directly into that internal iliac vein. And then the upper part of the rectum is drained by the superior rectal vein which goes into the inferior mesenteric vein. Now this has, this is interesting, it takes a different route. And so I find that, well, in the olden days, you know, I wasn't really aware of all of this. So I was just trying to drain through the common vena cava and common, common iliac vein into the vena cava. And then, and then I was like, wait a minute, what is, this is the, this is a superior rectal vein that I feel this big tube coming in the front of somebody's tummy. Wow, that has a whole different way of draining. And so this, this is really important because sometimes, you know, if, if people aren't familiar with the drainage pattern of the rectum uh, related to hemorrhoids, especially, then, you know, maybe they're not going to get a full drain. And this is, this is interesting to me because it's such a different drainage pattern. So we have you know, that superior mesenteric, sorry, superior rectal vein that drains into the inferior mesenteric vein. Now, this is the vein that drains, you know, like the sigmoid, the descending colon, and comes right up here to the splenic vein. And then that goes into the portal system. And so this has a very different route of draining um, than the inferior and, and middle rectal veins and cannot be overlooked, no matter what kind of hemorrhoid, hemorrhoid you have. So when I see somebody, what I'm trying to, I provide, you know, passive care and give them instructions for active conservative management. So the passive care that I do is whatever the underlying condition is, I want to treat that. So, so, um, that's, that's, that's a main thing. You want to get to the underlying thing. And then after we're dealing with the, whatever the underlying reason is, then we want to drain all those veins and we want to lift and mobilize the organ. So the organ is not like sitting on some of that drainage pathway and, and causing a backup. Then of course we've got to drain the lymph that always goes with it. I use homeopathic suppositories for folks um, because that's real good at taking down the inflammation. Sometimes I'll even have people put in two suppositories so they can get higher um, 
into the into the rectum. And then if the hemorrhoids are chronic, then what'll happen is that there's been so much venous dilation, you can't really get back the good flow of the venous system. Uh, it's just too much distortion. And so I'll have people do the Kesey technique, which is electric ablation. And you can look here um, at the Oregon Hemorrhoid Clinic. That's, you know, just a, a skip over um, to Milwaukee, Oregon, and uh, have Dr. Gardner take care of that for you. And it works great, gets you back on track without an invasive surgery. This is very simple, straightforward, and um low risk. So of course, this active conservative care stuff you would do at home, like it's super important to eat all that fruit and veg every day, bulk up those stools. If you're tolerant of whole grains, that's awesome too, because it's got great fiber. So if it's millet, or if it's quinoa, brown rice, um, whatever, whatever you are tolerant of that's whole grain, that's awesome. And the wholer you can get it, the better. So, you know, the minute oatmeal is not as good as the standard oatmeal, which is not as good as the steel cut oats, which is not as good as the oat groat. So you basically just want to try to get foods in their most natural state. So your body has to work hard to get that energy out of it. And that has a lot of fiber and it'll really plump up those stools. Got to get that water in. And then when you're on the toilet, you don't want to stay there for a long time. And you don't want to be bearing down, bearing down, bearing down. That's the way you get these, these hemorrhoids. Um, like we talked about with the piles or the external hemorrhoids, if you, if you wipe too much, that's going to be an irritant itself. So you could do like a bidet um, or a peri wash. So if you don't want to get a bidet installed in your house or even that kind that you can get like the little squirter inserted on the back of your toilet uh, without, you know, getting a whole bidet, um, then you can just use a peri wash bottle. All that is, it's not fancy. Just if you got like an, um, you know, a plastic squeezable, you know, ketchup bottle or mustard bottle, when you're done with it, wash it out. And then just keep that filled with water on the back of your toilet and squirt your behind after you poop. And that will clean up all the poop off of the anus so you don't have to wipe too much. Another thing is, you know, tux, that's made out of witch hazel. You can get that at the, at the pharmacy, the grocery store, it's over the counter. And that's just like a little cotton pad that you tuck up into your anus and that helps to decrease the swelling of the hemorrhoids. You can make that yourself if you want to by just buying witch hazel, it's real cheap. And then squirting that onto a, a you know cotton ball. And then you can just tuck that up into your anus to, um, to take care of the, the swelling in the varicose veins. And then you'll just poop it out next time. Don't like tuck up a handful or anything like that, just a little bit. Um, and don't tuck it up high just there at the entrance. Um, and then he, the, the suppositories that I like are called heme calm or hem calm homeopathic suppositories by Boyeron. And so you can get those at Amazon or anything like that. So um, there's lots to do with hemorrhoids. So don't suffer, don't suffer. Check out, check out Natural um, Women's Health Institute and um, get some care for your hemorrhoids.